Hello, and welcome back to Analysis. Tunisia was the first country to experience the Arab Spring, the self-immolation of street vendor Mohammed Bouazizi led to a series of demonstrations which, three years ago today, led to the overthrow of the 24-year-old dictatorship of Ben Ali. Since then, the Arab world has been engulfed by revolution and civil war, but Tunisia is still often held up as the most successful country to undergo the Arab Spring. But will this continue to be the case? Joining me in the studio to discuss this is Mamoun Alabasi, a journalist and political commentator, James Schneider, the editor of Think Africa Press, and joining us by Skype from Turkey is Yasmin Ryan, a journalist based in Tunis. And by phone from Doha, we have Dr. Nuruddin Meladi, head of the Department of Mass Communications, Qatar University. James. Why did Tunisia avoid what has happened in places like Syria and Egypt? Well, I mean, in the case with Egypt, there's one enormously important institution which has been leading a large part of Tunis uh, Egypt's post-Mubarak era, which has been the military. And Tunisia doesn't have uh, the kind of military that Egypt has in terms of uh, its enormous power, also its kind of social role within society and how it's perceived, and also its in, uh, an immense financial strength, economic strength, and also its ties with um, the outside world. So uh, in terms of the, as I was saying in the first half about the kind of negotiation between all the various forces and all the various factions trying to come up with a solution, there's one force which in the case of Egypt I think has been incredibly negative, which is very, very powerful, which is the Egyptian military. So Tunisia instead, when it's sort of negotiating between um, uh, protesters of various sorts and then the current uh, coalition, or the now just resigned uh, um, is the misled coalition government. It had uh, the trade union federation instead was organizing the, um, the negotiations. So the, the whole kind of tone was significantly more democratic, significantly further away from the idea of military rule. And, um, uh, and I think that's probably a, a goes a long way to describing why Tunisia has been su more successful than Egypt. Uh, Nuruddin, um on visits to Tunisia, people have said to me there is an enormous gap between what to say the coast and the interior, a gap in opportunity and a gap in, in living standards. Do you think that's a threat to the future of the country? Um, I mean, as it was um, uh, one of the probably um, issues that instigated the, the revolution, which is uh, the discrepancy between the north and the south or the interior parts of the country, it may be a problem in the future, as it is a problem now, to be honest. I mean, this is an accumulation of decades. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't think, and I didn't think, a government that uh, runs a country for a couple of years or three years will be able to sort out all of those, all of those problems. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I think this is an ailment. This is, this is an imbalance in terms of the, um, the infrastructure, in terms of um, um, uh, what um, uh, available in terms of job opportunities, factories, um, uh, agricultural um, uh, kind of development in, in those parts of the country. If, if future governments, uh, the current and the future governments, will not take care of this, it would be a, a continuous uh, problem or continuous issue for social tension, for uh, probably political and social instability. I would, I would. Mm. I think one of the one of the issues that I really see that the um, uh, government of um, uh, Hamad Jibali or Ali al or um, uh, uh, meaning the, the, the Troika didn't manage really to sort out is, is, is to try or do its best to um, uh, at least um, find immediate solutions for these um, um, disadvantages parts of the country. Uh, the, 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 the current government or the, 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 the kind of um, 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 leaving government um, has, has concentrated to some extent with regard to its economic plan to strategic um, um, uh, big projects, rather than thinking about the, the immediate needs of um, uh, these villages and these small towns in the south, the uh, northeast of the country, which are really very much disadvantaged, as, 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 as I mentioned. Um, 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 I mean, for, 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 any, for any government to think about social stability in the future, I think they will have to take seriously 
those parts of the country that are still very much disadvantaged as compared to the um, uh, wealthy north. Mahmoud, the, the current government or the caretaker government is faced with enormous economic challenges. Do you think they will be able to do anything meaningful or significant in the interim period? It would be difficult for any government to, to, to change uh, the, the, the things on the ground radically. I mean, to be fair to the, uh, the former government, they were stuck with contracts that already signed from the, from the previous era, not just Ben Ali's era, but the first caretaker government of El, of El Sibsi. So they were already stuck on that, and their main, their main mandate was to write the constitution. They have no mandate to draw up new economic plans. So they never really uh, you know, had the chance to start there. But if I can just add another uh, thing, even the, the biggest um, union in Tunisia, the, the problem, many, many names in the Arab world, when you hear leftist or union or Democrats, the, the adjectives sometimes are meaningless. Mm. The, the union was um, seeking permission and it was cooperating with the biggest businesses in the country to coordinate a strike against the government, to, to, go, to tell the people to go out on, a, on, on protest and strike on that day. So when you have the union in bed with the biggest business or the biggest businesses in the country to, to be, to, um, to be as a one united front against the government, instead of the union lobbying the government to protect the right of workers from big business, mm. you'd, you'd see that the, the game of politics, that economy is really, you know, not many people are really interested in that side of, of economy. And Yasmin, um, you've heard what Mahmoud said about the role of the union not always being positive, but there's outside interests also. Um, do you think the IMF have been helpful over the past three years? Um, well, the role of the IMF um, is obviously very controversial in Tunisia. And if you look back to, I mean, even the first bread riots, and I think it was 1980, 1981, they were just after the first round of neoliberal reforms had been introduced uh, in Tunisia. Um, and so, and Ben Ali's uh, economic model was called um, the, the mir a miracle by a lot of um, commentators for the economic reforms that he introduced. Um, so already that model has been thrown into question. And at the time of what we saw in the city Bouzid and places like Kasserine in the center of the um, country, you, you, we really realized that there was this whole social class that had been left out of this model. So already I think um, the IMF has been, yeah, the, the, something needs to change in, in this model. and. I think a lot of Tunisians aren't necessarily looking to the IMF to to solve this, um, right? Um, and also, the government, all the international donors, haven't really delivered on their aid. Um, so, right now, that's also a big issue. And so now that there is a new government. Um, hopefully, all of these donors will give the money, including the IMF. James, given that this caretaker government at least will be able to lead us to another. Mm -hmm. Um, round of fair and um, just elections. Um, what do you predict the future to be? What shape would the new Tunisian government take? Um, I wouldn't like to necessarily completely predict the future, but um, I mean the, uh, the the Islamist political forces are not, it's not going to go away. It has not been defeated, and it's going to play a, an important and a large role in uh, Tunisia's politics going forward can't necessarily predict what the, in the elections that will happen in the future when the constitution is every single article is uh, is passed will happen I can't I can't really predict that I think it's a first occasion we've had a party elected into government agreeing to stand down well, in order to make but th this is progress. The, the important point that was made it, it it's not the, the last election was not the election for a government. The last election was an election for a constituent assembly, which would come up with a constitution, basically which would decide the rules for how politics how would, the would be. And out of that constituent assembly, um, a basically an interim government, which is the government that has now just uh, resigned, the Al-Nada-led government, the three-party government, was a sort of an interim government that was elected, but, uh, but elected to serve its term whilst the... Uh, constitution was passed and then there'd be elections. It's pretty much served its function. The constitution is almost passed and there now needs to be new elections. So it's it's not as if they kind of won this enormous majority, huge mandate to rule and somehow have ro rolled back on it just two years later. Yeah. 
Nouridine, it's, it's often said that democracy is more than the ballot box. Um, it really depends on having state institutions that are capable, that are fit for purpose and capable of delivering in a, a fair and just way to all the citizens. Um, what is the current um, situation of state institutions in Tunisia? Do you think they're fit for purpose? Well, I think, I mean, as you said, it's, it's, it's going to be a lengthy process. It's, 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 it's a transition that's going to take um, years, if not decades. Uh, I mean, democracy, as, as you know it in the, in the, in the West, is, 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 becomes a culture, a state of mind. Uh, unfortunately, it's, 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 it's not only the state institutions that are really um, failing this transition, but also it's, you, you talk about the mentality of many um, political or other groups. I think the, um, uh, for Tunisia to uh, make a transition within the next decade to a, um, something called um, uh, probably a democratic uh, situation, um, the state institutions, obviously, they will need a, a drastic reformation. Uh, I think the revolution has not done much, honestly, except scraping the surface with regard to ch changing some of the figures, changing some of the um, uh, practices, but um, uh, not, not honestly very, very much. I think corruption is still um, very deep in those institutions. Bureaucracy is so slow in terms of uh, um, um, uh, reforming the, um, uh, the work and the way uh, those institutions function. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, the next government and the, 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 next, uh, the, the following elected government after probably the next elections will play a major part in terms of um, uh, properly reform state institutions to serve the, serve, uh, the, the purpose of the revolution, to um, take the country probably and put it on the, on the uh, right track towards a democratic transition. What's going on now, I, 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 honestly, is not very optimistic um, uh, within the state uh, bureaucracy itself. Many um, uh, business uh, enterprises are very much advanced, I would argue, I would say, as compared to uh, state institutions. I take the, uh, the example, for instance, of um, 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 the media itself. If, you, if I compare, for instance, the output of the, um, of the, of the, of the state media, the, um, the al Watania, for instance, and compare it with other channels, I, I, I would say the others are rather more organized, they have probably more skills, um, they, they, they're probably more trained as compared to the huge resources available to um, um, the, the state-owned um, the state-owned media like uh, the the, um, the Al Wataniya or the public service uh, broadcasters. Uh, so it, it is going to be a, a, a transition. Hopefully, the the next elected government will play a major role in that in, 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 in that in that purpose. Yasmin, can I come back to you on that because I had to cut you off on the first part of the program because we were out of time. On the role of the media, you were talking about. Do, do you think there? Is, do you, as a professional, recognise any significant change in the media in Tunisia over the past three years? Well, freedom. The freedom of expression is a, a huge change, uh, and I remember in January two thousand and eleven going to some of the first press conferences with uh, Tunisian journalists and speaking to some of them after. That and it was it was quite amazing. I mean, it's very challenging for a journalist who's been working in a in a country where you have no freedom of expression, and suddenly to find freedom of expression. And even if you look at the education system, a lot of Tunisian join, journalists point to the the way journalism is taught. Um, and then the I, I think one of the biggest issues is, and speaking to ordinary Tunisians. So many Tunisians tell me they don't have trust in any of their politicians or any of their or any media. So I think it's also a, a important, important service to citizens that that journalists should learn that they're not serving one political party or another, but they're really serving uh, Tunisian citizens and the right to unbiased information um, and not misinformation or, or propaganda. And and I think all different media outlets have been guilty of that in, in some respect. But there's also hope because there's a new generation of journalists. There's the, all the bloggers who have been really, who were really good um, towards the end of Ben Ali's regime at really exposing cracks in the system and who have continued to play that role in, in questioning politicians. So, so yeah, so I think it, it will be just like democracy itself, building media takes a long time. But I, I do think there is hope and, the, yeah, 
and there's, there's that, a lot of fear. That remark that people don't have trust in politicians or media, it sounds familiar here in London when, of course, we're waiting yeah. for the outcome of the Leveson inquiry. But uh, uh, Nuruddin had mentioned also the problem of corruption, and I'd like to ask you, how serious a problem do you feel that is? It, it's a problem that goes back at, for at least 50 years, from, from the beginning of independence. And, but I, I think you, you need, you require time for these things, for reform, you require time. And things are looking positive as long as we don't stop, we don't go back to dictatorship. And th there is always um, room for, for progress, not as what happened. In, I mean, you, you never reach utopia. Even in Europe, we never reach utopia. Mm. There, are always, uh, there are always rights that need to be uh, added. There are always uh, freedoms that we need, be, need to be taken care of. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a work in progress. Mm. You're hopeful, James? Yeah, I am hopeful. I mean, I think if we look back three years and say, right, well, what would, what would look OK, what would look good in three years' time, I think this would be a fairly good, fairly good thing. You've got a developing uh, political culture. It's taking a long time, obviously. There's still huge economic problems. All the, there, there are a whole host of problems, but the way that people are moving towards fixing them, given that there are you know, huge amounts of problems and there's still problems with the civil service and the entire architecture of the state, which is network patronage from the ground up, and that's very difficult to remove. But I'm hopeful that Tunisia will be able to continue advancing on a positive path. And Nouridine, what outside help can be given in a positive way? Um, has Europe something to offer? Has the United States something to offer? Have the other Arab countries something to offer? Well, I think uh, probably the key um, to the um, uh, future stability of the country is probably um, uh, for, the, for the Western powers, those who promote um, freedom, democracy and uh, liberalism, not to allow any form of dictatorship to have hands on the... the um, um, uh, political life in t for the future in Tunisia, not to allow the example of um, the Egypt to um, replicate it anywhere in, the, um, uh, in, 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 in that part of the Arab Spring. I think that's the, honestly the most important thing. Uh, also to um, uh, promote uh, the, the caretaker government and the next elected uh, government um, um, fully and wholeheartedly and uh, probably um, think less about the Western interest and think more about um, the, 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 the interest of, of those countries, because stability in that part of the world is also serves the stability in the rest of the Western world. I mean, think about Tunisia as the probably next door to Europe, next door to Italy. Uh, any, any, any future instability, um, um, uh, God forbid, in Tunisia will, will have its own repercussions. Mm. It will have a rever reverberation on, on, on Western Europe itself. Um, so, yes, I think that's, that's what, um, what is very much needed, is, 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 is to help maintain stability and uh, not let any form of extremism or terrorism to flourish in, in that part of the world, including mm. any form of dictatorship, what, um, uh, whatever uh, it is and under what uh, name it is. But uh, stability in the region is important. And, of course, um, Yasmin, the situation in Libya is not helping, would you say, the internal situation in Tunisia? Absolutely not. not. Um, I would say the situation in Libya could potentially, more than anything else, um, in the future destabilize Tunisia. Um, uh, and even if Tunisians get everything right, if they ha Libya is a much bigger country, it's a much wealthier country, even things like food, um, food prices in Tunisia have, have gone up significantly because a lot of the, the Libyan market, um, Tunisian producers can get more um, if they sell on the Libyan market. So that's just one small thing. There's also arms mm. um, and then groups like Ansar and Sharia and, and various armed groups, which even if to, they're not in Tunisia um, anymore to, well, to a large extent, a lot of people can go seek refuge in Libya. So Libya is, is yeah, really, I, I know a lot of Tunisians are very concerned about the situation uh, in Libya. And of course, the, the price of food is a serious matter because the revolution was about food and freedom. And if pressure to get the economic is to reduce the subsidies, won't that have an impact on people? 
uh, yeah, but ag again, to, to sort this out, you, you need a clear mandate to have a, um, from, from the next government that it will be changing radically the way it does business or the way it does the, the economy. Uh, the, the current government did not have that mandate, did not dare to rock the boat. It's already bound by many contracts and agreements, and it's fair to change anything. Uh, it, it might even come like from the, the, the issue of the IMF. It's do you please your Western partners or because then you would, if you don't have their backing or if, if they would turn against you, they might fail your democratic project. Or do you turn, how far do you turn to the social side? Mm. All of those things the Tunisian public must be aware of and they must make that choice. That choice was never up for, uh, for discussion. And in, James, in the, the young people without immediate prospects of jobs, do you see that as a serious uh, threat to the stability? Yeah, it is a serious threat to stability, but um, it could also be a positive driving force. I mean, if the, the young continue to be organized and they mm. continue to be willing to uh, make their voices heard, those kind of debates when they come from, you know, do we go down um, uh, IMF-led austerity or do we try to um, uh, uh, boost aggregate demand within the country and boost living standards for poor people, that might drive um, that debate more in the kind of progressive direction away from the, the externally led one. Nuruddin, what can we do for the youth? Oh, that's a big question. I think it's, this, um, uh, it's one of the probably most urgent um, or needs for the government, for the next government to, uh, to do, because um, uh, unfortunately the youth who participated very much in the... Um, 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 in making the revolution happen of the 14th of January, um, they feel nowadays, um, um, again, de disenfranchised, um, left out uh, in, 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 in various ways. In employment. Notre I, I do apologize, but once again, we've run out of time. My thanks to Yasmin, to yourself, to James and Mahmoud here. Do join us again for analysis. Thank you.